Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. Back with a message. I'm going to start out reading a little scripture. And then we're going to go into Pat's two cents. And we're going to deal with how God can pull us out of our pits, our holes, our graves, our heartaches, our circumstances. God can pull us out of all of it. Some of you live in an emotional pit. Some of you have been battling depression for years. Well, I want you to know. God can get all of us out of every one of our pickles. When we can't do it ourselves and medication can't do it and the psychiatrists and the psychologists and our family members can't do it, nobody has that magic button. Baby, I'm telling you, God knows how to deliver. He knows how to get us out of our our trick bags where we can't kick our way out, we can't cry our way out, we can't scream our way out. But baby God can pull us out and breathe new life into us. All right. Now, I want you to hear this. And you pay close attention now. You sit down and you turn off the phone and listen to this one because sometimes we get so distracted we really don't get what God is saying to us. Listen not only from the literal sense, but listen from the figurative sense. You hear me? Now, I'm going to start out reading Ezekiel chapter 37 and then we'll follow up with Pat's two cents. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. Now, you know, I got to I got to interject right here because uh, <laughs> how would you feel if God did that with you? Can you picture a whole valley full of dead, dry bones? Kind of, kind of eerie and spooky, huh? Yeah, I don't think I would like that tour myself. But that's what God did. And, okay, we continue on. And caused me to pass by them round about. Boy, it sounds like they were all over the place. Okay, let me continue reading. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. Mm. Well, and he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live and I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord so I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above. But there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as, I was, as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up on their feet, an exceeding great army. <sighs> then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, 
Our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Whoa! Can you picture that? That is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. Because to think that God can paint such a picture of revival, of refreshing, of renewal, when we're dry and we feel dead and worn out and empty and, and, and useless and, and what's the use and oh my goodness I'm telling you you guys listen to this God loves us so much if we could just get that sometimes you have to bug God in prayer and say Lord show me how much you love me because I need a shot in the arm that can carry me for the rest of my life. When I get down, I need something to reflect on that I know that I know that I know. And when you know that God loves you, I am telling you, it even makes the struggles worth it. Okay, listen to this. God loves you so much, you guys. God does not want you to sink in the mire of your despair. He doesn't want you to give up the ghost on your hopes, your dreams, your aspirations, your desires. He doesn't want you to give up even on you. Listen, God has dreams and, and, and plans for your life. He has made you for a purpose. Some of you are made for multi-purposes. But listen, you have to go to him to find out what you're here for. You're not a mistake. You're not a, oops, you're not a boo-boo. God created you in his love. I don't care what the circumstances were that brought about your conception, but God is the one that decides who lives. And he is the one who has to breathe his breath of life into you. So, Never think of yourself as a big mistake. Never think of yourself as a joke, some joke somebody played on you or on society. No, you have been beautifully, wonderfully, and lovingly made by the love of God's heart. He knew you before you were in your mother's womb. Even if you don't know who your mother is, he knew you. He knows you. He knows what makes you tick. He knows all your ins and outs, your ups and downs, your strengths, your weaknesses. He knows your whole makeup, you guys. Listen. Go to God. He will lift your spirits. He will give you the hope you need. He will give you the courage you need to go forward. Don't give up that easily. Don't decide that because you don't see it. Because nobody sees it in you. Because you started out from a lousy beginning and you don't know who your mother is, your father is. You don't know why you were born. You may not even know what country you were born in. You may not even know what day you were born. You don't. I'm telling you, God still has a plan for you. Don't give up on that. Don't give up on God's heart. Don't give up on how he feels towards you. Because when I tell you that God knows exactly why he placed you here and for what purpose, trust in that. It may be hard for you to trust because you may not have seen much evidence. But when you look at somebody like me, just look at me on this screen. 
You're looking at a woman who, when she was a baby, was born illegitimately. My father knocked my mother up. Now, I could have been a statistic of never knowing my father. But I was fortunate enough to have the kind of father that wanted to be a father to the child he brought in. So he married my mother and took her teenagers in and took care of all of us as one big kind of unhappy family. A lot of arguing, a lot of fighting. I don't mean fist fighting, but a lot of fighting. There was a lot of upheaval, a lot of uh, dissension in the house. There was uncomfortable uh, teenagers with a father that wasn't theirs, and they resented him in some ways, but knew he was taking care of them. But you know how that goes. So I felt like the outsider in my home, my own mother and father. But I felt like the outsider because all my brothers and sisters grew up together. And then here comes along me. Yeah. But before all that took place, after my mother had me, two years after, she had a nervous breakdown and was committed to an asylum. So now I'm in orphanages. And then my father, who, thank God, had gone to a court and given me his name, went and found where I was. It took him a while. But when he found me, he got me out of the orphanage and placed me with friends of his. And I bounced from pillar to post. One didn't work out. The next one didn't work out. It was temporary. Then the next one. Then he finally found two old people that would take care of me. And he paid them while he worked round the clock as a moving man. So we all don't come out from ideal circumstances. Some of us come from 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 parents who who are drug you know drug addicts or parents who are alcoholics or just volatile fighting and arguing all the time to the point where we never even want to go home. Well, I grew up with a mother who made me feel like I was the curse to her life. I always wished I hadn't been born because I felt like had I not been born, my mother would have been a happy woman. So I always felt unwanted. I knew my father wanted me, but I always felt like my mother wished I had never been born. Now, she would tell me things like, you know, Patty, you could be borderline retarded. She would say, she would give me a lot of negative feedback, but remember, she was still recovering from a psychological explosion there. She had an episode. So she wasn't quite working with, you know, her elevator wasn't quite going to the top. So I was dealing with all of her emotional anger and rage. You know, when people crack like that, they're cracking from, from emotional upheavals that come from unresolved issues of their own. My mother's mother had committed suicide. I mean... It's like a chain reaction, you guys. Wounded people hurt people. It's just a given. There's nothing they can do about it. But God, he can make all the difference. And when I say he can pull you up out of your graves, I am here to tell you that God delivered me from a root of rejection. I felt like a reject all my life. But God, and until God, and when God did his thing, I was okay. That was no longer an issue in my life. And that was my core problem. So I'm here to tell you that yes, God took me out of my grave he breathed his life into me when I accepted the Lord Jesus and he filled me with his Holy Spirit. Three days after I had given my heart to the Lord, I felt alive for the first time in my life. I used to call myself the walking dead and an emotional cripple. So when I say God can pull you up, I am telling you from experience first-hand experience. Yes, God can. 
you have to give him a try. I'm not going to go any further because, as you can see, I get emotional because I tend to be the crybaby. Yeah. And I'm so grateful for all of the changes God has done in my life that, yeah, <laughs> as you can see, God bless you. Be encouraged and don't give up. Look up, ask for help, and wait for him to move in your life. God bless you.